I love stretch wobbins because they're so much more comfortable and easier to move around in. How about you? Hi, I'm Kira. You probably recognize me as Island Socialist from my Instagram page and my YouTube channel. Like I said, I absolutely love stretch wobbins. I love sewing with them. I love wearing them. Even when I am shopping for fitted pants, I like to make sure that the fabric has a little bit of stretch. It could be because of my personal body shape. I am hippie and I have a little something behind there. So to me, stretch wovens make it so much easier to move around, to sit down, to bend down. Picture this. Picture those 100% cotton rigid denim jeans. I can't sit properly in those without just squeezing the heck out of my belly button area. Therefore, I tend to avoid those at all costs. Let me know if you do the same. In today's video, we'll be getting into the nitty gritty of sewing with stretch wovens. The what, the why, the how, and everything in between. We'll be covering topics such as needles, stitching, hemming, cutting the fabric. I am going to walk you through the composition of stretch wovens, some pros of using stretch wovens, and even some things to look out for. So if you want to join me for a deep dive into the wonderful world of stretch wovens, keep watching. So what exactly is stretch woven and what sets it apart from regular woven fabric? I'm going to give you the simple textbook definition. It's a woven fabric with spandex fibers added in. Quick fun fact. Did you know that the word spandex actually comes from the word expand? Makes sense, right? So what they do is they add elastin fibers, usually in the form of lycra or spandex. They blend it with other fibers during the weaving process. And that is how you get a stretch woven. So that is what adds a little bit of stretch to a stretch woven fabric. So they add it in different ratios depending on what stretch percentage they want to achieve. So some of these stretch wovens that I have in my stash range from like 10% to 40% stretch. So you get a little bit of stretch that comes with a knit, sort of, but the structure of a woven fabric. Best of both worlds, in my opinion. This is probably going to be the most fun part of this video because we all love playing in fabric, right? So let's dive into my personal fabric stash and we're going to have a look at my very huge pile of stretch wovens. <laughs> I am going to show you different substrates and different types of stretch wovens that are available. And we're going to see how differently they drape from each other and how differently they stretch because they are quite different. I have jacquard, denim, twill, and a bunch of others. So come with me into my sewing room. So I've pulled some of my stretch woven stash and I just want to give you a little bit of an idea of what you should be looking for when fabric shopping for stretch wovens. So for example, this entire pile is stretch cotton sateen but they are actually quite different even though they have the exact same content so all of these are actually 97 percent cotton and three percent spandex yet some of them are quite different from others so i'm gonna try to run through these individually as quickly as i can so you can see the different drip the different weights and the different amounts of stretch and just so you can have some examples of different types of stretch woven fabrics that exist on the markets so this fabric is stretch corduroy and i just used this to make a cropped pair of glissando pants so that is the pant length that is included in the glissando pattern this is my scraps so as you can see this is the selvage and this is the stretch this is a pretty thin corduroy it has okay drip which i found was nice for the cropped pants so as you can see it's pretty soft not too structured or hard and nice stretch on the cross grain and absolutely no stretch on the lengthwise grain so i use this to make my glissando pants for the pockets on those same pants i used just a plain stretch cotton here you can see it's stretching on the cross grain and again no stretch on the vertical grain and this is a pretty thin stretch cotton so these are my front pieces with the pockets and on the left side you can see where i trimmed back the one and a half inches as instructed to reduce bulk this raw edge is going to get encased in the fly anyway 
as is this side. So what I did is I used a lighter weight fabric for the part of the pocket bag that you won't see. So this is much thinner than the corduroy. Same orange though, to make sure it doesn't look funny from the right side. Let me show you the right side. So here you could see that thinner stretch cotton again to reduce bulk and you really want to make sure that you use a stretchy fabric on the inside as well because it does get caught since the edges are going to get caught in the fly it means that if you use a different fabric hair like a non stretch woven it's going to reduce the stretchiness across the entire front across the entire tummy area which is where i think i need most of the stretch the tummy area the hip area so you can use your main fabric um for this part but like i said because i'm using corduroy even though it's a very thin corduroy i just wanted to reduce bulk as much as possible and so i used a stretch cotton fabric on the inside where nobody will see obviously for this part you have to use the same as your main because it is going to show in this area this is another stretch cotton fabric as you can see it is pretty thin i don't know if you can tell that it's slightly translucent you can see the pattern printing through to the other side it feels like cotton lawn here is the salvage this one has okay drip and again it stretches on the cross grain but there's absolutely no stretch on the lengthwise grain so pretty thin slightly drapey along the lines of drapey fabric i have this stretch crepe in this beautiful neon color there is the salvage and it has just a little bit of stretch on the cross grain and no stretch on the lengthwise grain again this is a pretty translucent fabric you can probably see my cutting mat printing through and this one is very drippy so this is will be classified as a lightweight stretch woven which will be suitable for blouses as i was pulling this fabric out some of the threads came out and i wanted to show you that these threads are actually stretchy so you can really see that there's spandex if this were just like 100 percent cotton these threads would in no way move like this these are all of my cotton sateen fabrics i'm not going to go through all of them for the sake of time because some are very similar to others so these three printed ones i would say these are very similar weight to each other so i just do one and then these two solids are completely identical and then i have this other one so let's start with the beautiful butterflies as you can see it does have that slight chain which is common for stretch cotton sateen here is the salvage and it stretches on the crossways green and then no stretch at all on the lengthwise green this fabric is really nice and soft and drapey it feels silky soft i absolutely love this fabric and this will make a lovely blouse because again this one can be considered as a lightweight stretch woven so next we have the solids this to me feels like the traditional stretch cotton sateen this feels like the type that i always get in my local fabric store so it has a nice weight it's slightly structured it's not completely drapey and it's not completely structured i love this type of pants here you can see the salvage and the stretch crosswise and then absolutely no stretch lengthwise so I love this one for pants and again you can see that slight sheen on the right side versus the wrong side so the pink one is exactly like this as well and then these three are very similar to the solids this is the wrong side and this is the right side it does have a slight sheen as well it stretches on the cross grain no stretch on the lengthwise grain are you beginning to see a trend here so this one because of how colorful it is and it's slightly drapey slightly structured it's like in between has a nice stuff and this one screams dress to me and i wanted to share this one as well just because there's something interesting about it notice the direction of the stripes there you can see the salvage and usually you would cut across 
right? With the direction of the stretch. As you can see, stretch is cross grain, no, no vertical stretch. But look at the way that the stripes run. So you're going to be cutting the pattern across the vertical stripes. And that is not typical for stripes, especially stripes that have this variegated pattern that's almost like a border print. So I'm actually stuck on what to do with this one. And I'm going to touch on this topic of stretch direction later on in the video. But it does have really nice stretch. And again, it's like in between structured and drapey. I would say probably a little bit more structured than the previous multicolored one. This next fabric is absolutely beautiful. I got this one from Style Maker Fabrics. And this is actually a reversible glitter stretch suiting. It has a nice weight to it. Still some slight drape in between structured and drapey. But I think this would make a lovely jacket. So here is the selvage, and it has the stretch going across the selvage. So crosswise and no vertical stretch. I also think this selvage is so pretty and it would be so fun to use this as a design detail. This next fabric is one that completely threw me when I purchased it because at first I actually thought it was a knit fabric because of how stretchy it is. And I also want you to pay attention to the fact that this is the selvage and look, this one stretches an insane amount on the lengthwise grain and there's absolutely no stretch on the crosswise grain. So that is what is different about this one. This one is a stretch jacquard. Here is the lovely wrong side. I feel like if this is one of those fabrics where you can play around with both sides. The selvage is actually what made me know for sure 100% that it is woven so i want you to pay special attention to the selvage as i stretch it there is no doubt that this is absolutely a woven fabric you can literally see the weave in the selvage and here is the wrong side of the selvage but you can actually see the threads woven in that selvage so for a stretch woven this is easily the stretchiest one i have ever come across and I think this would be perfect for very, very fitted pants. I made a pair of legato jeans from this stretch denim. This is from Cali Fabrics. So here you can see stretches on the crosswise grain and absolutely no stretch on the lengthwise grain. This is what the wrong side looks like. So this is a pretty sturdy stretched denim that I used for my legatos. And then I made another pair of legatos in this very fun fabric also from Cali Fabrics. This is a waxed stretch twill. This is what the wrong side looks like. And this is what the right side looks like. Here is the selvage. And it stretches nicely on the cross grain. Absolutely no stretch on the lengthwise grain. So as we are on twill fabrics, I need my first pair of glissando shorts from stretch twill. If you have been following me for some time, you may recognize these shots from the glissander release i think this is also on the pattern cover and this fabric has such lovely stretch and it is quite thick so thick and stretchy perfect for shots no stretch on the lengthwise grain and while we're on the stretch twill train this lovely fabric was gifted to me by a dear sewing friend this is an amazing stretch twill and here is the salvage and this has really nice stretch as well. And then no stretch on the lengthwise grain. But it is thick, it is structured. This is a weighty fabric. And then in the same class, I have stretch drill. This white stretch drill is quite lovely. Here's the selvage. There's the stretch. No stretch on the lengthwise grain. Again. It should be picking up the trend that none of the stretch wovens have actually wanted. The one jacquard had stretch on the lengthwise grain, not the crossways, and everything else had stretch only on the crosswise grain. So all of those fabrics have different contents and different stretch percentages. Some of them I do know the stretch percentage of already, and if I did, you would have seen the stretch percentage on the screen as I was showing the fabric. 
but others i need to calculate and so if you need to calculate your stretch percentage love notions does have this free printable knit ruler on the website i will link it in the description box and you can use this with a four inch strip of fabric and you can stretch it to figure out how much stretch is in that fabric and that is really helpful if you need to decide which pattern goes with which fabric so if a specific pattern calls for a specific stretch percentage you will know exactly what the stretch percentage is in your stretch woven if you use this free fabric stretch guide So these are the types of patterns I prefer to consider when I am sewing with stretch woven fabric. Number one, patterns that are actually designed for stretch woven fabric. With Love Notions, we have the Sabrina Slims and the Legato Jeans, for example. I'd also consider patterns that are designed for either woven or knit fabrics. So the New Tinley, for example, the Summer Key, the Sonata Dress, duet trousers just to name a few and lastly i would consider just patterns that are designed for regular woven fabrics like the glissando for example especially because it is pants you know i said i want that little bit of stretch button-ups i love using stretch woven for button-ups they have that extra room in the sleeve area so patterns like aria melody then a shift dress or shift top style is a really good one as well so cadence for example and then if you do happen to have a more drapey stretch woven like the stretch crepe fabric then i would consider a top like the harmony blouse so you want to keep in mind the drip the stretch the weight when choosing pattern Patterns that I would avoid sewing with stretch woven are patterns that don't even mention woven fabric at all. So patterns that say knit only or even patterns that say stable knit. I would avoid using stretch woven fabric. I know it is tempting. We've had so many questions in our Facebook group. It is so much easier to sew a woven pattern in a knit fabric than the other way around. It will take a lot of pattern drafting skill and a lot of sewing experience in my opinion to change a knit pattern to a woven fabric things to consider are the negative ease four-way stretch needed for a lot of knit patterns i would just stay clear i don't think you will get a nice fit you probably are going to have sizing issues and uh, issues around certain areas like neck bands and armhole um, curve it could get messy really fast so i mean if you have the extra time and you want to experiment never say never that is the joy of sewing really and truly you can do whatever you want you can break all the rules you want <laughs> but just keep in mind that it is not a simple task and it does require some skill and experience and experimentation now that we've had some fun playing in fabric and you've seen some examples of different types of stretch wovens, let's match them to some love notions so important. So since today is Glissando's Feature Friday, I will start with Glissando. So I use stretch twill, like I said, for my Glissando shorts and then my stretch corduroy I use for my Glissando pants. And the other fabric that I would use for glissando is actually this pink stretch cotton sateen. I think I have been converted to the bright pants side of the world. <laughs> then my legatos, I used the waxed stretch twill and of course the stretch denim and earmarks for legato jeans would be my white stretch drill. This fabric, this stretch twill, I'm going to ask in your opinion because the weight, I feel like the weight and the thickness suits pants, but I think the print suits a dress, like a utility shirt dress kind of vibe. I don't know. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. That were amazing. Up to you guys. Then my reversible suiting, 
this if i had need for a coat which i don't this would make an amazing oxif coat and the oxif coat is recommended for heavier woven fabrics as well as stable knits so i think a stretch woven would fall right in between nicely and because it is reversible i can see the collar and lapel area in the darker color and because of the sparkles it will be perfect at holiday time so i have no need for a coat but if you happen to have fabric that looks similar to this active coat would be lovely jacquard i feel like this one is super obvious just because of how much stretch it has i would choose a really fitted pant pattern and i would go with the sabrina slims and because it kind of looks like snake print even though i think it's just diamonds i think that would make really really cool funky pants and I feel like I would style this with like a bright top, like even this neon. The purple cotton sateen with the butterflies, because this one is so much more drapey than all of the other cotton sateens, and because the print is just so lovely, and some of them are so large, I wouldn't want to cut into them too much. I'm actually thinking the Harmony blouse would look lovely in this, because it has a little bit more drip. It will look nicely with the swing design of the harmony blouse and then you get that extra little bit of stretch for movement in the sleeve area so this to me is given comfy chic and we have my gray or taupe um, stretch cotton sateen and this would make really nice classic neutral duet trousers that you can wear all year round it has the perfect weight for pants um, you can style this with so many different things and I think with a neutral color like this you get so much wear. Then my multicolored stretch cotton sateen. I have actually been holding this to meet my mom as an outer dress. So this one has already been assigned. And this lovely uh, brush stroke one that was gifted to me by my dad. Because of the structure and because of the design, again, this is a design that I don't really want to cut into too much because it is so busy with these big strokes. I'm thinking classic structured shift dress. So this one would look lovely as a cadence. I think a sleeveless cadence dress in particular, knee length. Or the stretch crepe because of the drape. Again, this is definitely going to be some sort of blows. I would go so far as to say this could even work for Rhapsody just because of how drippy it is. Now, with Rhapsody, because of the loose silhouette, I don't really need the stretch anywhere, like not even in the armholes. But I'm just throwing it out there. Rhapsody, Cadence, Harmony, Ballard, any woven pattern that requires a lightweight, drapey woven, this could work for. And this stretch cotton, because it feels like lawn, because it is so thin, I think this would make a beautiful area. And I actually have another stretch cotton that I bought when I purchased this from the same place. And I did make an area. So I will insert photos so you can have an idea of what this would look like. So area or melody. And the final fabric is my stripy stretch cotton sateen. And this one I need you guys just help again because the stretch runs the opposite way to the stripes i have no idea what to make and i'm definitely thinking some sort of dress where i will play around with the stripe direction so drop me all of your ideas below and that is it we've covered my entire stretch woven stash sizing and adjustments so if you're sewing a pattern that is already designed for stretch wovens you can go merrily along your way you don't have to make any sizing adjustments you can just make your regular fitting adjustments you're guaranteed to get a good fit if you just follow the size chart if you're sewing a garment that is designed for regular woven fabrics then the main adjustment you'd want to consider is sizing down that is dependent on the style that you're sewing as well as the stretch and weight of the fabric if i am sewing blouses tops and dresses i usually don't bother to size down a dress 
maybe it depends on the style but for tops and blouses i don't bother to size down at all especially if it involves a front button placket i would advise against sizing down because you're gonna end up with gaping buttons if i am sewing pants i almost always size down when i'm sewing pants with a stretch woven fabric especially cotton sateen i have found based on my own experience that high stress areas like the waist the hips and the knees can get a little bit baggy with wear and so i just always like to size down on the pants to account for that so these are my glissando mix for example so this skirt is the knee length skirt included in the glissando pattern and as you can see this fabric is very very sturdy there is no stretch at all this is actually a an upholstery fabric so it is very structured very sturdy and so i followed the size chart this skirt is size 16 at the waist to 18 at the hips and that is perfect fit now when i made my glissando shorts when the pattern was just released i sized down because this fabric is very very stretchy the stretch twill is quite stretchy so this is size 14 at the waist greater to 16 at the hip and again perfect fit and if i had made this in 16 to 18 with the amount of times i have worn this thing the hip area and the waist would have definitely been stretched out by now there's no rule that says you have to size down this is just what i personally do for pants especially the waist would have been way too big if i did use the woven sizing and so for my cropped flares using the stretch corduroy i follow that same rule and i have 14 at the waist and 16 at the hip because it is nice and stretchy it is going to sit quite snug and fitted on the waist and hip area and then when i sit down and my body expands and my stomach and my thighs my hips my bum spread a little bit this fabric is going to move with me and stretch with me and it is oh so comfy so i personally prefer to size down when sewing pants in particular with stretch woven fabric but like i said there's no hard and fast rule and if in doubt you can make a mock-up in a similar fabric to test out the sizing for yourself and see which you prefer So we have our fabric, we have our pattern, we've done our sizing adjustments. The next step is cutting. Stretch wovens, you cut them like any other fabric. There is no special rule, there are no fancy requirements. You can simply use your sharp fabric shares or rotary cutter. I use a rotary cutter to cut every single thing. <laughs> so I just use my rotary cutter as normal. The only thing I would recommend is that you make sure that your tools are sharp so you're not warping the edge as you cut it or the fabric is not stretching as you try to cut. So now you have your fabric cut and the next step is actual sewing. So let's talk needles and stitches so you know with a knit fabric you use a ballpoint needle and with a woven fabric you use a regular sewing machine needle i want to test out the ballpoint needle versus the regular sewing needle on i'm gonna pick like three different fabrics with different um stretch and weight and we're gonna test out side by side the ballpoint versus the regular woven needle because i want to see if there's a difference so i can advise you on which needle is better let's go to the sewing machine so right now i have in my ballpoint needle this is what the ballpoint needle looks like on the stretch cotton sateen this is what the wrong side looks like with the bobbin thread 
this is the ballpoint needle with the stretch jacquard what that looks like and this is the wrong side with the bobbin thread and this is the ballpoint needle with the corduroy this is what that stitch looks like and this is the bobbin side now i am changing the needle to a universal size 14 needle universal needle on the stretch corduroy universal on the top ball points on the bottom and this is the bobbin side universal on the top ball points on the bottom on this particular fabric i actually find that a universal needle looks a little bit cleaner universal needle on stretch cotton sateen universal on the top ball points on the bottom and here is the back with the bobbin thread on this fabric i can't tell much difference between the two universal needle on jacquard universal on the top ball points on the bottom and here is the back on this one the universal looks better to me it looks a little bit cleaner and a little bit neater a little bit straighter so there you have it so we've picked our needle and inserted it into the machine and the next step is actual real sewing so you're probably wondering what stitch do i use do i need to use a stretch stitch or am i good with just a straight stitch i'll say this your vertical seams like side seams and plackets and flies those seams typically don't need to stretch and stretch woven every single one of them i checked none of them has vertical stretch anyway so your vertical seams are all good with a typical straight stitch however parts that need to stretch around the body like the hem on the shorts or the waistband i would actually advise using a stretch stitch but as usual it all depends so on my shorts i did not use a stretch stretch stitch on the hem and remember shorts hit at your thigh and for me the thigh is one of the thickest parts of my body and when i sit and when i move and when i bend my thigh meat tends to move and expand and so i actually need the hem to expand with me now if you use a regular woven fabric it's not going to stretch and expand with you so you don't have to worry about st uh, stitches popping but if you do use a stretch woven and considering that you may have sized down you're gonna need the thigh of those shorts to move with you this is automatically going to try to stretch because it is a stretch woven the stitches there are also going to need to stretch as well here is the mistake i made on my glissando shorts this is the hem and this is literally the furthest the hem can stretch because the stitches are stopping it from stretching any further now i'm gonna move my hands down and you can see that this fabric can actually stretch pretty far right but the thigh only goes this much and so i have actually had to repair these stitches because there are just two lines of straight stitch and they're pretty narrow straight stitch as well i did not change my satin so this is like a two and a half so this is the most it can stretch and if i am being very active then it's possible that these stitches are going to pop on me so i actually need to redo this hem completely and i am going to redo it with a twin needle so it does have a little bit more give than just a regular straight stitch next i want to show you the waistband on my corduroy pair now here's the thing with me and waistbands that makes it a little bit complicated the waist is an area that is a little bit easy to stretch out and get baggy over time especially depending on the fabric that you're using like i said cotton sateen in particular 
I found that it gets really baggy over time with washing and wearing. But I personally like the feeling of a very structured waistband. I like the feeling of the waistband holding me in. So I actually used the woven interfacing to keep the structure of the waistband. Um, and I did use a straight stitch, but I used a wider straight stitch. So anywhere from like four or five will give you a little bit more stretch in the waist than just a regular, the regular two and a half stitch. And because the waistband is sewn on and then top stitched, these stitches are not going anywhere. They're not, <laughs> they're not going to pop. Unlike the hem that is just turned up once and then you have one stitch line for the hem. So for the waist, I personally like it more structured and I break the rules a little bit by using a straight stitch, but I do use a wider straight stitch and that gives it a little bit more give in the waist. If you prefer and you want the waist to move with you, I would recommend actually using a knit interfacing and using stretch stitches like the lightning bolt stitch, for example, to attach the waistband and top stitch the waistband. That way you will get the maximum amount of stretch from the fabric around the waist area. What I'm going to do is take you over to the sewing machine and we are going to test out the regular straight stitch, the wider straight stitch, and the lightning bolt stitch and we're going to see how that affects the stretch of the fabric so you can determine what stitches you prefer to use in what areas on your stretch woven garment so back to hemming like i said with the thigh length shorts you definitely want to use a stretch stitch for hemming like a twin needle lightning bolt zigzag and so forth with the cropped pants version of the glissando for example that area of the pants is not going to move like i can't see at any point even with movement how this width of pant around your calf area or close down to your ankles is going to need to stretch at any point i just can't see it so i think for longer pants a regular straight stitch is going to be just fine for hemming but i also wanted to show you that just like wovens stretch woven fabrics can be frayed and i will do a close-up of this frayed hem so i left the hem raw on these pants and i frayed it a little bit and you can actually see some little curly spandex fibers hanging that can stretch. So I thought that was quite interesting. So this is another option for hemming, just like you would fray regular woven fabrics, your stretch wovens. Most of them are going to fray just fine. Of course, you can test on a scrap first. So here I have my test strips of my stretch corduroy with different types of stitches on it. Well, the first one doesn't have any stitches on it because I just want to show you how much the fabric can stretch. It can stretch till it pretty much distorts. You can see all the, um, the wheels. This one is the lightning bolt stitch and this one can stretch all the way. It can stretch pretty much the same as if it did not have any stitches in it. This next one is a straight stitch with a five stitch length and I stretched the fabric ever so slightly as I was sewing this stitch and this one could stretch pretty far as well. So this is what I did for my waistband on my corduroy pair. This one is the same five straight stitch but I did not stretch the fabric as I was sewing. And this one can get to right about here. And you can feel, you can feel when it pulls taut. And that means that the stitches would break if it is in a high stress area. And lastly, we have a regular straight stitch. This is two and a half. And this one 
this is it <laughs> it can't go any further so you can make your pick and decide which stitches you want to use where for the lightning bolt stitch on this particular fabric i will need to make some adjustments to the stitch so that it is not so puckery because it is such a narrow light night lightning <laughs> bolt stitch it did distort the fabric slightly as i was sewing for a hem on the shorts i recommend the lightning bolt stitch or a twin needle so you can run this same test on some scraps of your fabric before you begin to sew so you can make your decision about what stitches you want to use so i think we can come to the conclusion that sewing stretch woven fabrics is not only fun but it's also practical and there are some pros that definitely have skewed me toward using stretch wovens for sewing very often first one has to be comfort especially for pants nothing beats a stretch woven pant for me i am not too much of a fan of neck pants i prefer structured pants so i do like woven pants but that little bit of stretch that a stretch woven adds is just perfect for me to move around and feel comfortable and sit comfortably the next one is mobility and that stems right off of comfort you can bend down sit down if you have a very active lifestyle like say you are a kindergarten teacher for example i would imagine a stretch woven pant to be so practical for you it just gives you that extra ability to move freely you can squat you can stretch a leg you can bend down and the pants is going to move with you and the same goes for jackets so sometimes with jackets this movement can feel very restrictive it's like as you move your arm you can feel the arm hold train to move if you have to stretch for something i often find that with jackets i can't stretch all the way up like i would like to you can stretch this far and i think a stretch woven just gives you that little extra movement so i would say the top two pros of stretch wovens are comfort and mobility what about things to look out for when buying stretch wovens when sewing with stretch wovens i only have one single thing on that list and that is the stretch direction as you can see from two of my examples one of them stretched on the lengthwise grain instead of the crosswise grain and the other one though it stretched on the crosswise grain the stripes ran <laughs> the opposite way then there's also corduroy that has a nap so that is something you also need to keep in mind so stretch direction nap direction direction on a whole is the one thing i would say you need to pay special attention to when shopping for and sewing with stretch wovens so we've gone through examples of different types of stretch wovens we've gone through the actual cutting and sewing process you know what to look for when you're shopping for fabrics and when you're getting ready to sew your fabrics i hope that you learned something that you didn't previously know i hope i have influenced you to pull out your stretch wovens and i hope you're convinced to grab the glissando bottoms pattern if you happen to be watching this video on friday august 25th 2023 today is a lucky day today is the feature friday for the glissando bottoms which means you can grab the pattern for just five dollars today only i also wanted to mention that if you do happen to use my affiliate link which is linked down below i will earn a small commission at no extra cost to you but of course there's no obligation and you don't have to so thank you so much for stopping by for today's video if you want to follow me personally i'm on instagram and youtube at island socialist happy stretch woven sewing see you next time <laughs>